guys so welcome back thanks for clicking so this is the reason why islam will never die or will never end these are the powerful reasons why islam is true and why islam will never die let's check it out why is victory to the believers has not come yet some people even ask why is it taking allah so long to respond to our dua i personally even received a letter where a person says in summary that I have been making dua to Allah numerous times. I have not seen a response. My dua has not been accepted. And as a result, I became an atheist. That guy left the religion. Subhanallah. What is going on? And another person, a sister who was on campus and then she sees that her car got scratched with a key or so and then she felt this is perhaps due to her wearing her hijab. So as a result, she took off her hijab. So these stories continue to happen and there's a lot that can be said, but there's one point I want you all to please, along with myself, pay attention on and make sure we master. What's that point, brothers and sisters? Look in the past and learn the way Allah works in this life. The Sunnah of Allah, Allah's methodology in this world. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he did he go through? He went through so much negotiation to let go of his faith. They went to his uncle Abu Talib, tried to tell your nephew to stop you know, conveying the religion and he was steadfast. They tried to bribe him money, wealth, fame. You, want, you need a doctor to help you, you're going crazy, we'll help anything. They tried to compromise, one day for you to worship your God, one day for us to worship the idols. None of that worked. What did they resort to? Punishment, torture, persecution. The Prophet Wasallam it got so bad that one time he was praying right next to the Kaaba. So towards the Kaaba, right next to it. So Abu Jahl says, Unzuru ila al murai. Go see that show off, go see that loser. The one who's praying right in front of the Kaaba. Who amongst you will go to the slot camel of so-and-so family and do what with it? And get the dung, the filth, the abdominals of that dead camel and wait until Muhammad prostrates, his face is on the ground and then pour and dump everything on him. Look at Abu Jahl, that loser of the elite, the one who had influence, the one who had money, the one that had the prestige. He's looking after Muhammad وسلم, in a way to harm him. So who stood up and volunteered? Uqba bin Abi Mu'ayt one of the most miserable human beings. So he goes personally. I want you to pay attention to the word personally. Why? Because Uqba was of the elite. Uqba had slaves. Uqba could have told someone, go do this, this and that for me. But his hatred in him was so much that he stooped to that level that I will go get the blood, the abdominals of the dead camel, and I will personally grab it and go over my clothes with my own hands and wait until Muhammad وسلم, prostrates then dump everything on him. And indeed, Uqba goes. And he goes all the way to that dead camel, grabs that, will, can he, uh, that filth. Can you imagine that disgusting look and image? The abdominals, the filth, the dung and so on. Then he waits next to the Prophet والسلام, And the moment the Prophet makes sujood, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Uqba dumps everything on his back. And everyone that was there, Abu Jahl and Uqba, they laughed so much. The narration says they were laughing that they had to lean on the other so they don't fall. That's how funny it was to them that, that these Muslims are worthless. They are helpless. They can't even do anything and help themselves. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he says, I saw that scene. I swear if I had any power, any network to be able to wipe off the dirt from the back of the Prophet, I would have went there. Brothers and sisters, the Ummah was so weak that the Prophet himself did not have someone of the Sahaba, a group, an army to go clean that filth off his back. That's how weak that point of the Ummah was at that time in Mecca. Then someone passed by, saw this and they went to Fatima radiallahu anha. When they went to Fatima, Fatima, wahiya juwairiya, she's a little young girl, Allahu Akbar, that little young girl, radiallahu anha, she ran tas'a to her father and she cleans all that filth over the back of her father, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then she faced Abu Jahl, Uqba, and the enemies of Islam and she started tashtimuhum, she started to curse them and rebuke them. Why did you do that to my father? 
than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Pay attention. When he finished his Salah, when he finished his Salah, when he finished his Salah, why am I stressing on this? Because he knows Alayhi Salatu Wasalam to be victorious, to be strong, to be a man of dignity. I gotta worship Allah. He didn't give up on Salah. He didn't say there's no meaning in this. He didn't say, why would Allah do to me this while I am praying to him? He didn't, he knew that for me to be not humiliated in this life, I need to hold tight to my salah, to my connection to Allah. What did Allah say in the Quran? Wasta'inu, hold steadfast, seek assistance in what ya Allah? Wasta'inu bis sabri, with patience, perseverance, was salah and in salah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he got up and he faced the enemies and he made dua against them. He doesn't usually do that, but whoever deserves it, deserves it. So the Prophet said, Allahumma alayka bi Quraysh. Oh Allah, get revenge towards these Quraysh, these evil people, Ya Allah. He said it three times. Brothers and sisters, it got bad. And the lower class that individual was in society, oh boy, what did they get? Of torture. May Allah protect us all, Ya Rabb. Bilal ibn Rabah, radiallahu an. He got it bad. He was a Muslim. He was black. He was a slave. People didn't see value in such human beings at that time. They got him topless, put a massive rock on him. And all what they told him was glorify these idols. Talk something bad about the Prophet ﷺ. Sell your faith for something. Come on. But the whole time, Bilal's response was Ahadun Ahad. There's no God but one. There's no God but one Allah. Ahadun Ahad. So they got so angry. So they gave Bilal to the little kids. They tied Bilal and he started dragging him on the streets of Mecca. A rock hits him, breaks a bone, bruises his body, you know, him bleeding, whatever it is. And the whole time, Bilal being dragged, he says, Ahadun Ahad, Ahadun Ahad. There's no God but Allah. May Allah make us all strong, Ya Rabb, make us all strong, Ya Rabb. And then, yes, you may wonder, Tayyib, yani, tab, why is Allah's victory not coming? What's going on? I want to tell you, a human being is a human being. And one of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased by them, one of them, Khabbab, he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he went to the Prophet, he says, Ya Rasulullah, do you not ask for help? Ala tad'u Allah lana. Oh Prophet of Allah, would you not make dua to Allah for us, Ya Rasulullah? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sensed that feeling of weakness, feeling of hastiness, so the Prophet got angry. His face turned red. Then he went to Khabbab and he told him, there were people from the past, true believers from the past, who would have their skin, their bodies, combed with iron combs that would separate the skin, the nerves from the bones. La yatruku deena. That person will not let go of that deen. With all of this, does not let go of their deen. And someone of the past used to come and they would to dig a hole just for him. And the head would come out of that hole. Yati bil minshar, a saw. And that saw would be placed right above their head. And they will cut it into two pieces. That will not cause that man to hesitate and let go of the religion. That, that will not cause that man to have, you know, doubt in his faith. Allahu Akbar. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this religion will prevail. The truth will take over. Oppression will be gone. The oppressed will get their rights back. The oppressors will be held accountable. So much so that someone will travel from Sana'a in Yemen all the way to Hadramaut will fear no one. Will fear no one. La yakhafu illallah. Will fear no one except the anger of Allah. Will only fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only concern. I don't want to do something that upsets Allah. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet is saying that in such a weak point in Mecca, brothers and sisters. He's saying that while he couldn't have his Sahaba clean that filth off his back. And he's saying that with confidence because he knows the victory of Allah comes. But we need to be real men and women, true believing men and women. You know what the Prophet said at the end? But you guys are hasty. You guys keep rushing and rushing. You want everything in a rush quickly. I want it right now, right now. And brothers and sisters, we too are hasty. We too are hasty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Am hasibitum an Allah says, do you think you will make it to Jannah? 
وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And you will not face, you think you will go to Jannah, but without facing what the people in the past have faced, why? What did they face? مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْجِلُوا They were seeing adversity, hardship, suffering, and they were shaken to their core. So much so that the Prophet and the people at that time, they said, مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهُ They said, when is Allah's victory coming? Then at the end, Allahu Akbar, when the peak of hardship comes, when the peak of adversity hits, right after that, Allah says, Ala inna nasr Allahi qareeb. Indeed, non-negotiably, without a doubt, Allah's victory is near. Ala inna nasr Allahi qareeb. Wallahi, I'm saying this, may Allah accept from all of us, Ya Rabb, taqabbal. But you feel with the adversity that we're going through as an ummah, weakness, on a sense of suffering, you cannot do help your brother and sister. Something may happen to you or something may never reach them. You feel like you're almost hopeless. Know that the victory is right at the door. Know that at the peak of it, it's right at the door, the victory is coming. Brothers and sisters, but take note of something very important. The ages of human beings is not like the ages of nations, two different ages. When the Prophet ﷺ, for example, he mentioned the victory over the two super evil powers, the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire, he promised that Islam will prevail, their oppression will come to an end. It did take place, but it was after he passed away. What am I trying to say here? Victory is not associated to a specific individual. Allah's izzah and given is not only given just to a specific individual, it's only tied to that person. Islam will not die with the death of an individual, even if that man was the Prophet ﷺ. So what should we do? You work, you pave the way. If we see the victory in our lifetimes, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. If we do not, then so be it, may our children see it. But you and I, we work hard and we know we gotta stay steadfast and strong in the face of the adversity because Allah never breaks His promise, brothers and sisters. Be true men and women. And inshallah, inshallah, if we don't see victory, we will celebrate the victory with those, the believers who've seen it in the future, all in Jannah with the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. May Allah keep you all strong. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wow, that was a beautiful one. There's a story talking about, you know, Prophet Muhammad, how you can be victorious, you know, the positive, positive impact Islam has on Muslims, what you can learn from Islam, you can learn from the life of Prophet Muhammad, how it all began, how he became victorious, how he fought battle and became victorious. And that was a beautiful one. I love his explanation about Islam. This is just you. You know, this is an information in which you get to know more about, you know, the religion called Islam, about Prophet Muhammad, you know, how he has connection with God, you know, what Allah can do for us, why we should not lose or why we should stay strong, no matter the situation. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.